Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is yet another case of a murder for hire plot that just does not go the way it's supposed to. This has been happening so often these days for some reason with women thinking that their best option is to just kill their husband instead of getting a divorce or literally going any other route. It's just craziness. But before we get into the case, I have a tiny little announcement. I will be attending CrimeCon in Orlando this year. I don't have a booth or anything like that. I'll just be hanging out and exploring. This will be my very first crime con and I'm so excited to be there and immerse myself in these cases and meet all the best and the biggest in the true crime world and hopefully learn so much more about true crime than I already know. If you happen to see me, feel free to say hey. I am so excited to meet any and all of you who are going to crime con this year and I'm just so excited in general to be there. This is the first year that I'm not going to be in school during crime con so I'm so excited to be able to just take the time off, go to crime con and meet all of you hopefully and learn so much about true crime. With that being said, let's get into today's crazy case. 43 year old Tatiana Remley, formerly Tatiana Woolcott, had been married to 57 year old Mark Remley since 2011. Now, we don't know exactly how the pair met, but some friends have come out to talk about how Tatiana may have inserted herself into the lives of many men and women until she met Mark and decided to marry him. So we don't know a ton about Tatiana's personal history other than that she is from Russia and she seemed to have at least a little bit of money. Those who knew her described her as very friendly and sociable to everybody. Her stunning looks, positive attitude, and love for horses got her into the exclusive world of polo in San Diego. Once there, Tatiana started dating around. Those who knew her said that she liked both men and women, and she continued dating both men and women until she started setting her sights on the wealthiest of men. Then she eventually met Mark Remley at this polo club. Mark was from a very wealthy family. His parents had an internet technology company that sold for millions back in 2002, and Mark himself received $26 million from it. Both Mark and Tatiana had been married previously. Mark had four children from his previous marriage, and Tatiana had two from hers. When Mark and Tatiana first met, apparently Mark would help pay for Tatiana's lawyer fees to help her fight for custody of her children, but she did eventually lose custody of her kids. This was after a very, very tough battle. Apparently, she really did want custody of her kids, so of course, losing them really hit Tatiana hard, and those who knew the couple said that Mark did everything in his power to make her happy and basically give her everything that she wanted. This included a huge multi-million dollar project that Tatiana wanted to start. She told Mark that she had this lifelong dream and he could help her make it come to fruition. Now, almost a year into their marriage back in 2012, Mark and Tatiana got into touch with a man named Eric Martinovich. I do apologize if I'm saying his last name wrong. Eric is a competitive horse rider and the founder of Big Horse Productions in Las Vegas. Big Horse Productions is an equestrian-based Cirque du Soleil style act, including equestrian acrobats that involve horses in their performances. This was right up Tatiana's alley and she wanted to get started on an equestrian circus show of her own. Now, at the time of them marrying, Tatiana was this beautiful Russian model, five foot 11 inches tall, thin, a beauty queen, and Mark was a rich businessman. Basically the perfect match. So when they contacted Eric about their idea, they said that they were willing to spend big for it. To be exact, they said that they were willing to front at least $10 million into this project. So Eric was in and he became the first show director. Over the course of 10 months, the couple spent over $3 million on a giant 45,000 square foot tent to hold their show. They planned to spend another $250,000 on the horses as well as a VIP lounge area for the arena. The show would go on to be called Valitar, located at the Del Mar Fairgrounds in California. However, the show would be a massive failure pretty much from the very start. It was clear to Eric from the beginning that Mark and Tatiana were in way over their heads. 
they had no idea what they were doing. Tatiana liked riding horses, growing up in a rich area of California and riding since she was a child, but she was nowhere near a professional horse rider, nor was she an acrobat or a dancer of any sort. They had no idea how to care for horses or put on a show. They started off as spending their money very recklessly to suddenly tightening up to an extreme and stop spending money altogether. Valatar opened its doors in November of 2012, doing four acts during their time up and running. Now, on the ads, Tatiana, the illustrious, beautiful blonde, was the center of it all. But again, she wasn't in any of the performances. She didn't have the talent. She did go out in the arena and ride her horse around, but all she did on her horse was make a couple figure eights and be done. Eric described that the audience would expect an actual acrobatics act from her since she was the one on the ads, but when she delivered nothing, they would just sit in awkwardness and give her a polite clap because obviously they recognized her as the lady from the ads, but she didn't really bring anything extra or anything glamorous to the show. This was not something that Eric wanted for this kind of show, so he expressed that he didn't want Tatiana in the show anymore. I just picture this crowd, you know, being so excited when she comes out on her horse, this is the lady on the ads, the face of it all, she's probably the best of the best, and then she just comes out and rides a horse like anybody else can, and then just like skedaddles, and then they're probably just like, okay, I guess that was something. But either way, during that time of one of those four performances, one of their horses became injured in an act which would cost them $1,500 for an emergency vet visit. But Mark didn't want to spend that kind of money to treat the horse, so the horse ended up being put down. After this, the couple fired Eric as their director, but when he left, so did 18 of their 25 performers. Eric thought that part of the reason that Mark fired him was because he didn't want Tatiana's totally anticlimactic horse riding in the show. At this point, people were really questioning the couple's financial decisions. They had no problem spending millions on random things, but for some reason, $1,500 to treat a show horse, basically the center of their show, the whole reason that they have this show, that was too much. It didn't make sense to anybody. Then the production crew stopped being paid. Mark canceled the contracts with the landlords that held their tent, but this was the same grounds where some of their employees had been living. They stopped paying utilities and had the production crews tear down anything and everything they could. After that, the corporation that Mark had created to oversee the production of the show, Equestria Development, they filed for bankruptcy. Then, everything they had purchased for the show, except the horses themselves, including the tents, stables, feed buckets, and chariots, they were all sold off at an auction to pay back their creditors. Now, during that time, the couple did actually split up and I believe Mark was the one who filed for divorce. This was less than a year after they had been married, but they didn't end up getting divorced. They got back together and seemed to settle their differences. I'm sure that being co-owners of this failing multi-million dollar project was not easy for their relationship, but again, they ended up resuming their marriage after all was said and done. They ran off to live in Hawaii for a few years after the collapse of Valator, but they did eventually return to the San Diego area. Even after this massively failed venture, the couple continued to live lavishly. They shared a $5.3 million home in Del Mar, California, while Mark owned a number of additional luxury properties in Hawaii, Rancho Santa Fe, and Coronado. They apparently would spend upwards of $50,000 per month. Tatiana had unlimited access to credit cards. They owned two trucks, a horse trailer, an ATV, and several animals, including parrots and goats. During that time, Tatiana convinced her husband to form another venture. This time, she wanted to start her own polo team. Polo, for those of you who do not know, is a field sport between two teams who use mallets with a long, flexible handle to drive a ball across the grass field between two goalposts, all the while riding horses. 
It definitely seems like a rich people activity, so I had never actually heard of it before this case. But either way, as you can imagine, you have to be a very good horse rider to play polo. This, again, was a skill that Tatiana did not have. So, after getting a group together, as well as several thousands of dollars to buy her own horses, her team debuted at the San Diego Polo Club in August of 2015. But only a few minutes into their first match, Tatiana fell off the horse and broke her arm. Of course, the team lost because of this. After this, Tatiana decided that she didn't want to do polo anymore, and she sold all of her horses and dismantled the team. After this, friends say that Mark continued to bankroll any and all of Tatiana's new interests. He bought her new trailers, new trucks, and even a Rolls Royce. In total, the couple actually owned two black pickup trucks, a Ferrari, and three Rolls Royces. Crazy. Then they opened up yet another business in 2015, a new cycling studio called Rhythm and Power, but that too failed and closed its doors by 2016. Now, during the course of their 12-year marriage, those who knew the couple described them as having a very toxic, reckless lifestyle. The two actually started attending swingers sex clubs where they would hang out and sleep with other couples. They went to strip clubs together, hired prostitutes and strippers and all of that together as a couple, which no judgment, but a lot of people said that they did this very recklessly. Mark would go on to say that sex is probably the biggest part of their lives as a couple. He said that he is an adrenaline junkie, he loves to take risks and live on the edge. Meanwhile, Tatiana said that she liked to push boundaries and live beyond what other people would consider limits. However, through this crazy, wild lifestyle, the couple continued to have some pretty serious issues, and by July of this year, 2023, after 12 years of marriage, Tatiana filed for divorce once again. In these divorce papers, Tatiana claimed that Mark had been abusive for quite some time. She said that Mark was addicted to cocaine and other drugs and that he was prone to violent outbursts. She said that Mark had held a gun to her head at least one time in their home and another time he chased her around with a knife. Then she claimed that a bunch of Mark's friends had broken into their home and locked Tatiana in her room while one of the friends sexually assaulted her while holding her at gunpoint and the other ran around the house to trash it. She said that Mark was present at this and just let it all happen. She said that the friends then went on to break an expensive horse statue that was in their yard and put the head of the horse in her bed. In these court documents, she claimed, quote, on May 21st, 2023, Mark's friends came into our home and broke open my bedroom door while I was locked inside. It was late at night and I was scared to death. They forced entry into my bedroom and held me at gunpoint. I was raped by one of his friends who also told me that he planned on killing me. This happened all while Mark watched and laughed, allowing his friends to proceed. They went on to break my expensive horse statue in the yard and put the head of the horse in my bed, godfather style. She said that she fled the house after this because she was scared and she reported the incident to police. But as of right now, we don't have any further information about how this case was handled. Now, there was actually one incident about five years ago that was witnessed by neighbors. In this incident at around 11 p.m. that night, Tatiana ran outside of their home naked, running around their cul-de-sac screaming for help. She ran to multiple neighbors' houses and banged on their doors, but nobody answered because they were really confused about what was going on. Eventually, police did show up, and I saw in one source that Mark had been standing in their driveway holding an elephant gun. But somehow, the situation was handled, and I don't think anything further occurred. Now, I do want to note that a lot of Tatiana and Mark's friends say that they don't believe a lot of what Tatiana said. They said, especially regarding the drug accusations, that Mark and Tatiana both enjoy drinking and smoking cigars, but they have never known Mark to do drugs. However, as many of us know, a lot of abuse goes on behind closed doors, and many times, friends of someone being abused may have no idea what's really going on in the relationship. 
So I do just want to keep that in mind, not saying that Mark was abusive, but I'm also not saying that Tatiana was lying. But as the case proceeds, you might tend to lean a little bit more on Mark's side because of the things that Tatiana would go on to do. Now, in the divorce filings, Tatiana said that after the pair split up, she hadn't had access to any of Mark's finances and she was experiencing extreme financial strain. She said that she was unable to maintain a very realistic lifestyle of spending a modest $12,000 per month, which was much less than she was used to spending, which was about $50,000 per month. She said that she doesn't have an income and doesn't have access to any of the assets, including the $1 million worth of cars. She said that she hasn't worked in years, but she was hoping to go to medical school soon. She requested that the judge order Mark to pay her $15,000 per month in alimony. Then, in another shocking turn in this case, on July 2nd, a few weeks after the divorce filing, the fire department received a call at around 7.30 p.m. to report that there had been a fire at the home that Tatiana and Mark once shared in Del Mar. When authorities got to the property, they actually found Tatiana there and she was in the possession of three guns and ammunition. At that point, Tatiana was arrested on firearm-related charges. Although investigators tried to pinpoint the cause of the house fire, they still have not determined what made the house go into a blaze. However, Mark has said that he believed that Tatiana burned the house down. Now the house is practically burnt to the ground and is not livable anymore. After Tatiana was arrested and subsequently released on these gun charges, authorities actually learned of a much more sinister situation that Tatiana was involved with. Just after the divorce papers were filed, apparently Tatiana went to a close friend and told him that she wanted to have her husband killed. She even offered him $2 million to get the job done. But this friend was immediately concerned and he went to the police. So the San Diego Sheriff's Office launched a sting operation to catch Tatiana in the act. So an undercover officer posed as a hitman and arranged to meet her at a local Starbucks on August 2nd. There, Tatiana brought with her three firearms as well as a down payment. She then detailed to this officer how she wanted Mark killed and then how she wanted his body disposed of. We don't know the exact details of what she said. The only thing that the sheriff has released is that she did go into great detail about this. So because of this, Tatiana was immediately arrested and charged with solicitation of murder, as well as two weapons charges. Apparently, the firearms she had in her possession were not registered to her name. To these charges, she pled not guilty and was denied bail. As of right now, Tatiana remains in jail. Then, in another crazy twist in this case, as if this case couldn't get any crazier, apparently right now, Mark Remley is missing. It was said that just one day before news came out about this murder for hire plot, Mark was seen speeding down to his burned down mansion in Del Mar, California, before he rushed to a neighbor's house, knocking on their door to alert them that he was having a seizure. According to the neighbor, he appeared highly agitated and looked absolutely terrible. It looked to the neighbor like he may have been detoxing from something. Of course, after he told the neighbor that he was having a seizure, they called 911, who showed up shortly after to rush him to the hospital. One source said that at the time, even though he was only 57, he looked more like he was 77. As of right now, Mark's condition remains unclear and his whereabouts are unknown. So that is all we know in this case as of right now. There are so many bizarre aspects to this case with the whole house burning down, then Mark going to the hospital and Tatiana allegedly trying to take out a hitman on him, all of this happening at the same time. I wish there was a better conclusion to this case, but as a summary, as of right now, the couple has a burnt down house, Tatiana is in jail awaiting trial, and Mark is missing after looking to be in really, really awful condition. This is one of those cases that I really think is going to have a lot of information coming out within the next few weeks and months. 
I actually followed this case for about two weeks before I had enough information to make it into a video. So I will try to keep you all as updated as possible as more information comes out. But as of right now, that is all we know. Tatiana could be facing up to nine years in prison if convicted for the murder for hire plot, as well as an additional year for the weapons charge. This stuff is just crazy right out of a movie, and I honestly don't know what to believe. I do want to believe Tatiana when she says she was abused, but at the same time, she does also seem like a woman who loves attention and will do almost anything to get it. Whether she was abused or not, though, obviously, she doesn't just get to murder him. And honestly, the fact that she went to these lengths to try and get her husband killed, rather than, again, just settling for the divorce, says to me that maybe a lot of the toxicity was coming from her end. But who knows? I am really looking forward to finding out if and when Mark is found and what happened to him if Tatiana was really responsible for all of the toxicity in their marriage, or if maybe Mark went missing on his own, either because he found out about the murder for hire plot, or if there's another reason, maybe she already tried to kill him, and maybe that's why he looked like he was in such bad condition and was detoxing from something, maybe she already tried to poison him. Or maybe he really was abusive and he just wanted to leave the situation so none of this came out about him. Who knows? But I really hope that we find out in the coming weeks or months. But yeah, that is all I have for today's video and now I want to know what you all think. What do you think of this murder for hire plot? Why do you think she went to these lengths after she had already filed for divorce? Do you think that Mark's hospital stay has something to do with this? Do you think, again, that maybe Tatiana already set a plan in motion to try and poison Mark or something? Where do you think he is right now? Do you think he could possibly be in hiding at one of those other properties that we know he has? Do you think that Tatiana was the one who set the house on fire or do you think it could have been an accident? If so, why do you think she would have done that? Do you think that she was maybe trying to kill Mark in the fire, thinking that he was home? What do you think of all of this craziness in general? Let's discuss any and all of your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok account, which I now have. All of those will be listed down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!